I'm Sebastian Kranz from the University of Bonn and I would like to give you a video presentation of my paper Moral Norms in a Partly Compliant Society. In a nutshell, the paper models the interaction between individuals who have different, privately known motivation to follow collectively rational moral norms. In a few slides I will make clear what that precisely means. But what comes out is a model that is quite tractable and predicts a wide range of status facts across economic experiments. And the basic idea of the model is deeply inspired by John Hazani's work on rational ethics and rule utilitarianism. In the first volume of the Handbook of Game Theory, Hazani writes an essay about ethics and game theory. I want to cite one paragraph from that essay. The theory of rational behavior in a social setting can be divided into game theory and ethics. Game theory deals with two or more individuals often having very different interests who try to maximize their own selfish or unselfish interests in a rational manner against all the other individuals who likewise try to maximize their own selfish or unselfish interests in a rational manner. In contrast, ethic deals with two or more individuals often having very different personal interests they're trying to promote the common interest of the society in a rational manner. This means that in Hazani's view, rational ethical behavior is more than just having unselfish social preferences that take into account utility of other people. What is important is that ethically motivated people try to coordinate their behavior and to promote the common interest of the society in a collectively rational manner. Concretely, Hazanyu argues that rational, morally motivated individuals should follow rule utilitarian norms. Rule utilitarianism consists of two parts. The first is that one should have an utilitarian welfare criterion. That means if one compares different situations, one should prefer that situation that maximizes average expected utility, where the average is taken over all individuals. And the second part of rule utilitarianism is rule consequentialism. That means once society has fixed the welfare criterion, the morally motivated individuals should follow norms that maximize welfare, given that it becomes common knowledge that morally motivated individuals follow these norms. Hazani formalizes a mathematical model of rule utilitarianism but in a sense it's too general to be directly applied to experimental data. So in the last decade in economics there has been a big development of literature who studies experimentally or theoretically social preferences and fairness. But quite surprisingly the literature has largely ignored Hassani's ideas about rational ethics. The contribution of my paper is as follows. It provides a tractable formulation of rule consequentialism that allows for limited moral motivation and private information of types. And then I show that already a simple model with only two types can explain stylized facts across a wide range of economic experiments. There's also a third contribution, and that is I propose an alternative welfare criterion which I call complier optimality. Instead of an utilitarian criterion which puts equal welfare rate on every individual, a complier optimal welfare criterion only puts explicit welfare rate on those individuals who have the highest moral motivation. In the moment this concept may sound a bit weird, but I will show that empirically, but also normatively, it has certain appealing properties. I will present now the basic model, which allows only for two types. There's an underlying n-player game with extensive form gamma. And there's a commonly known norm, R, that specifies for each information set of the underlying game which actions are permitted or forbidden. For an example, let's consider an ultimatum game. In an ultimatum game, player 1 can offer a fraction x of one unit of money to player 2, who can accept or reject the offer. 
if player 2 rejects, then both player gets 0, and if he accepts, player 2 gets x and player 1 gets 1 minus x. An example for a norm in an ultimatum game would be that the proposer is forbidden to make offers below 40%, a responder is forbidden to accept offers below 25% and everything else is permitted. There are two types of players. Selfish types, whose utility is just equal to their payoff in the underlying game. And there are compliers, who feel this utility of g, which is some positive number, when they deviate from a norm by playing at least once a forbidden action. Types are private knowledge, and nature draws types independently for each player. The probability that a player is a complier is denoted by kappa, and we call kappa the complier's share. And we assume that kappa is common knowledge. So a player doesn't know the types of the other players, but he knows the probability that another player is a complier or selfish. So he has an idea of the distribution of types in the society. The presence of compliers transforms the underlying game into a new game of imperfect information. Recall the example from the ultimatum game where the norm forbid a responder to reject offers below 25%. If the moral motivation of compliers is high enough, a compliant responder will indeed stick to that norm. This in turn can also influence the behavior of a selfish player one. If there are sufficiently many compliers, it becomes individually irrational to offer 25%. A strategy profile of this new game consists of the pair of strategy profiles of the underlying game. One strategy profile for selfish types and one strategy profile for compliant types. We call such a strategy profile a norm equilibrium if together with some consistent beliefs it forms a perfect Bayesian equilibrium of the resulting game of imperfect information. Now we want to map a unique norm equilibrium to every norm but sometimes this underlying game has multiple perfect Bayesian equilibria. Therefore, we assume that there is an equilibrium selection function that picks a unique norm equilibrium for every norm. In our examples, multiple equilibria will be no issue, but in games where multiple equilibria would matter, one should consider different equilibrium selection functions for robustness. For every norm, it holds true that selfish types have a weakly higher expected utility than compliers. This result relies on the fact that types are private information. Therefore, a selfish type can always mimic a complier and thereby guarantee himself the same expected payoff. We can now define complier optimal and rule utilitarian norms. A complier optimal norm is a norm that maximizes compliers' expected utility, given the resulting norm equilibrium. Similarly, a rule utilitarian norm maximizes expected average utility of all types. From a dynamic point of view, one can think of these norms being chosen before compliers and selfish types interact. So they maximize welfare, taking into account how selfish types and compliers will react to the norm. The resulting norm equilibrium under complier optimal norm is called a complier optimal norm equilibrium. And similarly, we define a rule utilitarian norm equilibrium. The idea can be easily extended to any alternative welfare criterion. A rule consequence that is norm for welfare criterion W is that norm that out of all possible norms maximizes welfare W. So we have now completely specified the basic model and can apply it to examples. In the paper I derive some more general result for rule consequence that is norms, which I call the compliance principle, but I will skip that in this presentation.